I have this conversation o over and over again because obviously the New York Rangers are the leading uh, candidate to acquire a Mr. Jack Eichel. Now, uh, before we went on, we had a comment from uh, Bullets, uh, Bullet is Red, said, same conference makes this deal tough to do, but if Lafreniere, Kako, Miller, and the 15th overall pick could do it, the Sabres do not want older players and vets do not want to be here. Um, you're probably right, but what they need is somebody to change around the culture there. But the other thing is, if Chris Drury makes that trade, he will not only be fired on the spot, but beaten up before he can leave Madison Square Garden. So um, that that's just that. It, it, if that's if that comes from that's like one of those. Did we see a couple deals from the Sabers fans like that? But all right, let me finish what my point is, and then uh, get out to to Phil and everybody. I've been talking about this. Why do they need Jack Eichel? What are they going to do with him? Because once they get him, he's he's probably going to be on the second line, possibly with Panarin, or maybe even uh, they, they spread out their talent. Zabanejad, one line, uh, Eichel on a different line, and Panarin on a different line. So now you got three great lines. Okay, good. So we got to worry about he's a third-line center, arguably, or or you do one C. I know you're shaking your head, Phil, but follow me on this. Then you go to the power play. You're going to have a $10 million player, and you're not going to put him on the power on the top power play unit because he plays in the Panarin spot. You can't move him to the Zibanejad spot. You're not taking him over for Ryan Strom. If you move Chris Kreider off, they're going to put everything over to the left side. John, correct me because uh, I'm I might be wrong. You you don't acquire Jack Eichel and not put him on your top power play unit. I'm just telling you that right now. It's not going to happen. And also that thing about three lines. That's not happening either. They're not. They're not doing that. Chris Kreider will go down to the third line before anything like that happens, and he should. At this oh, point. that's definitely happening. Yeah, that should happen. It, it's it's coming. But um, you don't you don't get Jack Eichel to do. That. You get Jack Eichel, and you you figure your offense around Jack Eichel and Artemi Panarin, and then you slot in the other pieces elsewhere. That's absolutely how you do it. That's absolutely how you have to do. It. Um, as for that package. I'm just going to tell you right now, any Sabres fans that are watching this, you think you're getting that from any team, dream on. Because you're taking any team that gets him is taking on a major medical risk. He has a no movement clause that kicks in July. I would say July 1st, just to be safe at this point, because we don't know what date the offseason is going to start next year. But I'm going to say July 1st, just for argument's sake, whatever. But you have that kicking in. You have a $10 million AAV, you have a major injury risk, and you have a player that wants out. And the bridge has been burned. <laughs> it's still scarred from my <laughs> <laughs> Now, nah, well, you know what? I, I see a lot of people saying you don't want to get him. A lot of the people saying that they don't want to get him the minute that he gets here and he starts scoring and he's healthy, then everybody's going to change their – they're going to change their thoughts real quick on him. It happened with Yager. It happened with Lindros. It happened with Nash. Happened with Rick Nash. The we don't want you chance in uh, February of 2012. Yeah. Yeah, before the trade deadline when he when he actually scored the game tying goal and the against the Rangers. That band wanted it overtime. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean that that changed real quick. But he's going to be a game breaker. That's what he is. He's a game breaker. He's an elite talent. He's a top ten player in the league, regardless of position. It's just what he is. Um, it it it's just a matter of. Like I said, Kevin Adams lowering his price. And I know people want to sit there and say, well, you're just looking at it from a Ranger point of view. What team is going to want to give up that type of package to get Jack Eichel with this type of medical risk and that type of cap hit? Because I don't see Anaheim, and Elliot Freeman actually reported that Anaheim is basically out on him because they don't want they don't want to meet the asking price. If Adams doesn't lower his asking price, he stays there. And if he stays there, he's one, a distraction in the locker room, two, an injury risk, and three, it gets that much closer to that move, no movement clause date. So when that thing comes and that kicks in, he controls where he goes. And that value that they get in return for Jack Eichel, ooh, push. nose dives.
Those By the way, before Anthony says anything, Mike says, hell no on Eichel. Most I would risk if I was jury would be Kratzoff, the 15th overall pick, and Strom. Not going to get it done. It's going to be more than that, but it won't be that, that much more like some Buffalo fans are expecting or asking for. Anthony, your thoughts? Um, I don't... I Something about... Jack Eichel just rubs me the wrong way. I, I don't. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Maybe it was Phil's impersonation. Um, but no, I, I don't. Um, I don't know. It's just. It's just like he. There's no doubt that he's a great player. But some about his attitude in Buffalo. I know. Listen. I know they're a tie bar and he wants to win. Um, but he doesn't scream. He doesn't scream team player to me for some reason. I, I don't. I don't know why. I just. I just get that vibe from him and. I know not everybody is that type of way, but it is nice, especially if your star player is a team player. That would be nice, but I don't know. I mean, he's a great player, but for the Ranger organizations, I, I don't know if Jack Eichel is the answer. I mean, there's other players out there that I think could fit, you know, as well, too. So I don't know if the Rangers should put all their baskets in the Eichel basket, because I think there are a lot of other players out there that can, that can really improve their team and make them a playoff team. Um, okay. I mean... Let me just let me just say this, just to make a point. Like, like John Tavares left the, left the Islanders, and then the Islanders flourished. So you don't like Jack Eichel's a star player, sure, but you don't. The Rangers don't need him to take the next step and to become a playoff team. I, okay. I don't. I don't. I don't think it's a, a necessity. Um, I I personally think that Eichel, Buffalo may if they don't get the offers they like. I think. They might just let him have finally have his neck procedure or do whatever he has to do, play for them, and if he tears it up, now they can trade him at the trade deadline and his value is going to be through the roof. I I don't I think Kevin Adams is, is not going to budge. Yeah, it might bite him in the long run. It might bite him seriously in the long run. But on the flip side, if he a little more patient and Eichel plays really well for Buffalo, his trade value could become a lot higher. So. I mean, I still, if I, I'm a betting man, I like to gamble. I still say he's traded before the draft, um, but I, I don't see why Buff, why Kevin Adams wouldn't approach it that way if he's not getting the offers that he has. Okay, I'll I'll start because I had two questions for you, but I'll answer Justin's first. Justin, what's been going on with that is that the Sabers refuse to release the medical records to any team who's not in some sort of serious talks with them for Jack Eichel as reported by, I believe it was Elliot Friedman or Darren Drager was one of the two. I can't remember who it was, but um, they won't release the records until they're, they're in serious, serious talks about Eichel. And that's part of what's dissuading a lot of teams away from dealing for him because they want to know before they even think about, you know, what I would want to give up for him, what the, uh, the situation is, what the prognosis is, and is the surgery going to help or hurt him? Because the surgery might have him not start, you know, at the beginning of the season. He might be missing part of the season. And that's another thing that's dissuading teams away. Anthony, the two questions I had for you were, one, you talk about how you don't think Jack Eichel's a team player. Why? You said you don't know, but you, you, if you're thinking that, there's got to be a reason that's, that's nagging at you a little bit enough just to make you say that. And two, if there's another player out there that fits that bill and is a significant enough of an upgrade over Ryan Strom, who is he? Um, first question, um, I guess uh, Buffalo, I know he hasn't had, he hasn't had a lot of help uh, over the years on a bad Buffalo team. But, you know, for someone who is like an, an elite player. I just feel like he hasn't, he hasn't like raised his game or rallied the troops around him to make, to really make a, a, a push to bring Buffalo being a more competitive team. And I'll, I'll go back to what I know, just because, you know, I'm an Islander fan. But there were years, John, where, where the Islanders really weren't that great of a team. And Tavares put the Islanders on his back, essentially, and, and you know, brought them to the playoffs, like the short year against Pittsburgh in uh, 2012-2013. The Islanders made the playoffs. You know, they really weren't that great of a team at that point. 
Uh, Tavares was an MVP candidate at the end of that year. He didn't win, but he was MVP candidate, and he brought the team to the playoffs. Eichel hasn't really done the same thing in Buffalo. Um, so, I mean, right or wrong, uh, you know, I'm not saying my, my thing is correct, but that's just that's just my portrayal of, of Eichel, that if he was, he could have, he could have done more in Buffalo despite not having, you know, the best team around him. Now, um, just to, now, just to say, you're saying that with his body language, stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, just, yeah, I, I would, I would, a little bit, a little bit goes into that, but more so just, just the, you know, just the, the performance, you know, he does look like, to your point, Mark, yeah, body language, I don't blame him, Buffalo has sucked, so a lot of times looking at him, he just seems, you know, disinterested and, you know, la- lazy at times, but more so that, you know, Grant, I know your team's bad, but you know if you're that good of a player, you should still be able to rally the boys around you and, and take the take the reins and lead the team as far as you can go. And he hasn't he hasn't really made them very competitive. And like I said, I'm gonna use that Tavares example in 2012, 2013. You know he was a leader. He was he was uh, he became the captain the following year after Strait left. But he put the team on his back and he brought them to the playoffs. Eichel has not done that. I mean. So just before you yeah. answer, because I know I can see that up, that that upper lip just going. Uh, sorry, the bottom lip going. <laughs> but uh, and I'm welcoming the answer. I, I do have to say I said the same thing about him about two years in. Um, could different circumstances completely change his, his mindset? Sure. I mean, after all, everybody talked about Phil Kessel's attitude, and he's won two Stanley Cups. So you just get a guy in the right situation, it'll work. John. Uh, I mean, just in response to to that. Uh, I, I just I, I have to disagree like badly like highly 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 disagree with you because the Islanders teams that you're referencing were better teams than what Buffalo is now and has been for the last few years and it's not close either the Buffalo teams we've seen the last few years have been a borderline AHL team aside from two pieces you brought in Jeff Skinner okay you thought Skinner was going to you know, continue that 40 goal, you know, 30 to 40 goal pace. It's been the worst, he's the worst contract in the NHL hands down right now. I mean, Rasmus Dahlin is great, but what other defenders do they have? Where's the line of higher fire defensively? He's awful. I mean, they're goaltending. They don't know what goaltending is. They wouldn't know goaltending if it smacked them in the face. If it smacked them in the face with a hockey stick, they wouldn't know what goaltending was. Which is funny because for 10 years they had, they had great goaltending. Yeah, they had they they had, they went from Don, Brian Miller and, Brian and they figure out goaltending sense. It's it's incredible. Sorry, it's a 10, 20. Yeah, so twenty years, and then even Marty Biron in between was a decent goaltender. But you know what? It it, it I you can't compare the two teams. You, you didn't answer the other part of the question, which I'll let you yeah, answer now. Mark- who, is, who is that player then? Well, I mean. I would say the Rangers, like the Rangers, there's no doubt they need a center. But at the same time, I also think they could be a really competitive team, even if they got a high, another high-end wing. So I don't know if it needs to be a center. But just just a couple of names I would say that I think can make them a lot better of a team. Uh, if you look at some of the players rumored, you know, rumored to be available, um, you know, uh, even like a, a piece like. Uh, Carl, Connor Garland in Arizona, he's a very good player. He could score goals. Um, but you have you, you, what? Where are you playing him? There's a log jam on the wings. So you're going to tell me that you're not going to play Vitaly Kravtsov then at that point? I mean, there's no point of adding another winger. You got to add a center. You do. You do need to add it. Oh, I don't know. It depends who that winger is. If they got a good enough winger. I mean, they've been getting by with Zibene, with Zibanejad and Strom as their first two centers. So if they got a good enough winger that could score goals, you know, and Gallant implores Jory to add in some depth players who have jam and defensive responsibility, they can get by. Um, you know, another guy, another guy who's not a center, but people are talking now that that Nashville moved Victor Arvidsson. Uh, the future is in doubt with Ryan Ellis. They may move him and Ekholm. What about Phil Forsberg if he becomes available again? Phil Forsberg is a hell of a player. I think he would move Wing again for the ring. Again. Yeah, he's another, he's another winger. Why would you tie up Cap on another winger? It just doesn't make sense. You know what? Honestly, 
Las I, Vegas. I, I would have appreciated your answer more. And listen, I'm not trying to badmouth you or anything, but I, I would have accepted more of this an, of more of your answer if you had mentioned even Sean Monahan or Sam Reinhart. And what I would have said to you in response to those two, as I think I've said it before, is that it's not a significant enough of an upgrade over Ryan Strom to risk losing the chemistry that he has with Artemi Panarin. Because whether anybody likes it or not, he has he has some serious, serious chemistry with him. And Artemi Panarin obviously loves playing with him because since game six of the 2019-2020 season that they lost to Vancouver, that next game against Buffalo where they routed them 6-2, Strom and Panarin have been playing together at even strength. So they've been playing together for over a year and a half now. Now you have to get me a significant enough of an upgrade. Or even if, let's just say I'm Chris Drury. You have to get a significant enough of an upgrade over Ryan Strom at that center spot to risk losing that chemistry. Because you have to have a great player that can make that line work. And Jack Eichel is really the one guy that fits there. If you want to say stand pat with them, okay, fine. Understand it. You'll wait for your wingers to develop. Give Alexi Lafreniere top six time and stop messing around with him. Give Capo Caco top six time. Stop messing around with him. Move Chris Kreider down to that third line. You want to sign Pavel Buchnevich for, I don't know, five years, 25 million, and keep that up? Colin Blackwell needs to stay out of the top six. Don't mention that name ever. <laughs> if that name gets mentioned as a top six option, I'm going to break things. Well, but, um, how about this? The Rangers... I think the Rangers could be equally as good if they got Eichel with rolling, like having their centers next year being Zvenajad, Strom, Tolkien, and Casey Sezikis. I think that's a, I think that's a team that can that could. Who'd you have the third spot. one? Philip Deneau. Philip Deneau. Philip Deneau. Okay. okay. So Philip Deneau is going to look for. I don't know. Let's just say four, four and a half, maybe five million. Casey Zizekas is going to look for three, three and a half million. So you have nine million between those two centers. If you get Eichel and you send back Ryan Strom in that deal, you're gaining or you're adding probably about five and a half million in cap space, depending on what you send with him. You're adding on about five million in cap space. You got a dynamic number two slash number one center. You can go out and sign a cheaper center than Zizekas in free agency for your third or fourth line. Let's hope that, I don't know, Barkley Goodrow or, or Blake Coleman become available, and they're cheap. I don't know, maybe two, two and a half million, maybe three million at most. Honestly, I like that route better than the former because Philip Deneau, I don't think he's going to be worth the next contract he gets because his offense ain't going to come anywhere close to that 50-point season ever again, I don't think. Well, also, who who knows if uh, the Rangers end up, like I said before, demoting Chris Kreider to the third line. And then let's say you put a Capo Caco down there and try to do a top nine instead of a top six. It's it's just it, that could change around things dramatically. That's why, again, by the way, no to Casey Zegas. If you're going to sign Philip to no, you can't have Casey Zegas. I'm no. not tying up t uh, almost $9 million in my bottom two centers especially when I got people that I got to re-sign. That was and uh, yeah. uh, Dave has come back. Oh, by the way, before we I do Dave's comment, uh, our favorite Australian has signed in. What's up, Blue Shirt? Going on, buddy. <laughs> um, but don't forget to look within the system to fill the bottom six center spots, which is exactly where I was going to go. Morgan Barron is more Thank than capable you. of doing the fourth line. You know, And by the way, they still got Kevin Rooney there, who's okay. And... Um, I mean, again, I we talked about different ideas, and I I got criticized for the one that I published on Cap Friendly that I shared with you guys. But I mean, you also got uh, Freddie Gaudreau, who's a, a a free agent. You only have to pay him eight hundred thousand. Is he really that much of an upgrade? Or sorry, is Casey Zeke is that much of an upgrade? You have to go to like three, four million. Um, I would say he's yeah, a, a lot better player. An upgrade over Gaudreau, but three million is going to be tough, especially for him in a cap and a flat cap world. I don't know who gives him three and a half million at this point. But again, where I'm getting at with this is once you acquire him, I mean, yes, it's it's probably going to be the second line. Let's be honest, because I keep because Ryan Strom's got to go back in that deal to make the salary work. And um, 
Now, yeah, decent on on faceoffs. By the way, Chris Drury find somebody that could win a goddamn faceoff. And Chris, so, go get Michael Pekka and teach our centers how to win faceoffs, because that's what the Washington Capitals did. Yeah, that's. I mean, you could teach people how to win faceoffs. I mean, I had a line mate one time who I looked at him and went, "Eric, you got to just direct the puck over this way during the faceoff." He looked at me and goes, "You think I can control what's in there?" And honestly, my eyes just kind of went to, you've, you've never thought about that? <laughs> because I was always pretty good at face-offs. And I had to learn how to do that. So, uh, but anyway, so we're going to move on from this. What do you think? Is, if, is Jack Eichel even going to be a fit for the New York Rangers? I'm still kind of leaning towards, uh, granted, you know what? Phil is right. As soon as they make this trade, I'm going to be celebrating. So... Um, I guess that kind of makes me a hypocrite. All right. Put it all down in the comments below. And also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You like the video? Of course you did. So why not check out some more of our content? You can check the playlist right here or right here. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.